Thank you, Senator Cantwell. The first question comes from Sharon Steffen. She's from Charleston, South Carolina. She makes around $23,000 a year. A new analysis from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, as you know, says that Americans in her salary range could end up getting fewer government benefits under the Senate Republican plan. And she has a question for her home state senator, Senator Tim Scott. Sharon. Hi, Mr. Scott. How are you? Doing well, Sharon. How are you? Well, what I wanted to talk about is the fact that I am a single mom of four. It's not been easy. I take the lion's share of the financial responsibility from driving a flatbed truck, running landscaping crews, anything I can do to bring money in. And from what I understand, like you said, you were raised by a single mom. Yes. And she had multiple jobs. So what I want to know is how is this going to help other single moms if this goes through? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your work ethic. And I will tell you, much like my mom, sounds like you're setting a great example for your kids, Sharon. And uh, God bless the Palmetto State, having folks like you in the state. I will say that there are a couple of ways that this plan benefits f folks like yourself. Number one, we have doubled the child tax credit. It used to be $1,000. Now it's $2,000. That's a credit, not, not an exemption, which means that it's more powerful. So for four kids, that's an $8,000 credit. When we did our analysis on the bill, a single mother with two kids making about $41,000 we see her taxes cut by about 75% under our plan. With four kids, it's probably going to cut it even more than that. So the long story short is you get to keep more of your hard-earned money to make better decisions for your family. I think that's good news. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Sanders, yes, please. Um, Sharon, I wish what Senator Scott said was reality. Unfortunately, it's not. According to the Tax Policy Center, which is a nonpartisan tax organization, 87 million middle class households would see their taxes go up by the end of the decade. Now, interestingly enough, what they did in their bill is they made the benefits that go to working people in the middle class temporary. But the corporate tax breaks are permanent. So I'm afraid to have to tell you, not only will your taxes likely go up, but when these guys are finished with cutting Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, education, and other important programs for working families, it is likely you and your kid will be in worse shape. Well, patently false, number one. Let, listen, we, we can debate the issues, but we can't debate the facts. That's right. And here's what the Joint Committee on Taxation says. In her, in her income bracket, her tax will go down, not up, down. Well, speaking of the Joint Committee on Taxation, on average, what they say is the Senate Republican tax plan raises taxes on American families earning $75,000 or less by the end of the decade. That's what they say. Here's so the I'd like to bring in Senator, I'd like to bring in Senator Cruz and Senator Jack, Cantwell. One time, uh, I think the word I'm looking for is hogwash. Really? Yes, absolutely. Then you better talk to the joint. Well, let me just, this, this is the latest tax brackets from just last night. I'm not sure where your information is coming from, but the last proposal, the last, I'm happy to share this with you, uh, shows without any question, specifically to your question about your income bracket for your household, the answer is you will pay less in taxes than you did last year. Our proposal cuts your taxes. Anyone that tells you anything other than that is inconsistent with reality. So what, one of the reasons the, that some of the projections from different studies have said that people under $30,000 might end up with a net increase is because uh, of the repeal of the Obamacare mandate, uh, which will mean that some of them won't be getting the subsidies if they voluntarily withdraw from it, but also that insurance premiums uh, could go up to, by 10%. But, uh, Senator Cruz, I want to give you an, an opportunity to respond. Uh, let me take a little bit of time to unpack this because there, there are a lot of numbers that have been thrown out that are completely bogus. The, the center that Bernie relied on is a left-wing group. And the, and, the, and the reason they say 87 million people's taxes will go up is because he said by the end of the decade. Why in 2027 all of the individual tax cuts are scheduled to expire? Why? Because the Democrats have promised to filibuster their opposing tax reform. I'd like to make the individual tax cuts permanent. Your taxes, as Tim walked you through, ma'am, your taxes, just your child tax credit, is doubling to $8,000. That's real money. But because the Democrats are filibustering it, that's not permanent. You know what? Bernie and Maria could join with us right now, say they'll stop filibustering tax cuts, and we could make those permanent for everyone. 
The facts are clear. We are cutting taxes for everyone, and it's only the Democrats' filibuster that makes it expire after 10 years. Senator Cantwell? Well, I'm so glad you're here because you represent a part of America that we need to be serious about. Your child care costs have gone up, and they have not been kept pace with the rate of inflation. That's why we should be helping you. But instead, they've taken a good idea in this bill, which is increasing the child tax credit, and instead expanded it to people making up to $500,000 a year. I don't think that we can afford to give people at $500,000 a year a child tax credit. I want to find all the people like you in the economy and help you meet ends for your family and continue to thrive. And that's where we should be spending the money. Just the fine makes the Ted says that the tax policy center is a left wing group. It was founded by economists from Reagan. Didn't think he was a left winger. Bush won and Bill Clinton. These are people who are trying to do the hard objective work. And what they say is that 87 million middle class households by the end of the decade would see an increase in the so, tax. So, Bernie, true or false that Sharon's tax credit would, second, would double, child's second. tax credit would double. You talk true about false. filibuster. No, no, true or false. You talk about filibuster. The reason that what you guys have done is gone through so-called reconciliation. In other words, they are trying to pass this bill in an almost unprecedented way without asking any Democrats to become involved. If you want to do 60 votes, let's work together. You want tax breaks for the middle class, let's work together. But Bernie, you know why that's not happening? You're right. Ronald Reagan in 1981 and 86 cut taxes. You had a Democrat, Tip O'Neill, as Speaker of the House. The person who carried it in the Senate was Phil Graham, then a conservative Democrat. In the Senate, it was Bill, Bill Bradley, then a liberal Democrat. The difference from the 80s and now, we had Democrats willing to cut your taxes. Every single Democrat is unwilling to work with us. And in fact, you want to know the clear difference between the two sides in this debate and in the Senate? This is the third debate Bernie and I have done. In the last debate, Bernie was very explicit. He was very candid. He said he wants to raise your taxes. He wants to raise everyone's taxes. That's the what, difference. Ted? The Democrats want to raise your taxes. To provide and what the Republicans are, man, what the Republicans are doing country. is cutting Senator your taxes. You're right. They want to raise your taxes and then they want to spend your money. We want to cut your taxes and let you spend your no, money. You want to cut taxes for the billionaires. Maybe you'll no, get no, some cut taxes but this right one, there. Tim. Let's, but here let's, are the facts. Here are the facts. Sixty percent of the talk tax about breaks the you are giving your friend uh, coming from your let's campaign the contributors, the one percent. Let's let, let's let, let Senator Scott class. have the last word, and then we have Thank an you. audience question. Sharon, Sharon, let's just do simple math real quick. If you have four kids and you're you're Child tax credit is two thousand dollars each child. That's eight thousand. We're taking your standard deduction that used to be ninety three hundred dollars. We're making it eighteen thousand dollars. In other words, eighteen thousand dollar deduction, and then whatever your tax is owed, you have an eight thousand dollar credit to reduce that tax. In other words, you'll be getting a larger refund under our plan. Politicians, I want to bring this back for one second this, to the corporate tax. Quoting me, Jake. What Bernie said is that the United States of America should join every other major country on earth and guarantee health care to all people. And when we do it, we're going to lower the cost of health care so, for the middle class. I would, I, would love, what Bernie said. I would love to get this back to the corporate tax rate uh, for one second. And Senator Cantwell, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, and, and Senator Scott made, made an allusion to this, is that it isn't just Republicans who are talking about lowering the corporate tax rate. Uh, President Clinton last year said that the corporate tax rate needs to be lowered so the United States can be more competitive. President Obama proposed uh, reducing it from 35 percent to 28 percent. And our colleagues, uh, Camp from the House and Baucus from the Senate, worked on a proposal too. So the question is, how do we have tax reform? So we have a lot of companies in the Northwest who are these companies, who are working very diligently to sell products, whether you're talking about Microsoft or Amazon or Costco or Starbucks. Like, we have a lot of successful companies. The question is, how do we reform our tax code but not to the degree that 20 percent and giving this money away when I believe that the people who are here, Joe and Michael, also are job creators. They're small business people. And as the previous gentleman just said, when they're just going to put that into dividends instead of growing the 
productivity and wages of Americans. So to me, it's a comprehensive approach. While I'm willing to do something, and maybe the president was right, 28, maybe it's a little bit lower, but we're not going to do this by just having a truck load of money and drive down the street and have it fly off the back to corporations and not understand how this is going to help middle class compete in the economy of the future. Senator, you, thank you. you, you, you Senator, you, you, hang you, you, on one second. Hold, hold we have on another second. audience. Let me jump in very briefly Question on for that, you. Which is that the, the Democrats love to vilify corporations and job creators. But, you know, look, every one of us gets a paycheck. We get a paycheck from somebody. And I'll point out that as much as the Democrats want to make your employer the bad guy, you could take the entire net worth of Apple, Google, Microsoft in your state of Washington and ExxonMobil combined, seize it all, nationalize those companies. It would pay for one year of Bernie's tax plan. One year. That's nuts.